the other night I had a software update pushed to me, version 2023.6.9. And I was a little surprised when I was looking at my release notes in the morning to see that Tesla Vision's Park Assist feature was that update. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at how accurate Tesla Vision's Park Assist feature is and whether that's something that you can truly rely on as part of your day-to-day -day driving experiences. Now, in the first day or two when I was playing around with it, it seemed to be somewhat promising. But as I've experienced a couple of unique situations, I've discovered that, you know, it has a ways to go yet. And so I wanted to do a few different tests here, something that I do on basically a daily basis and just see how accurate Tesla Vision's Park Assist feature really is. So I've got two use cases here that I want to test out. The first one is pulling straight into my garage. I do this from time to time and uh, I've got a lot of clutter here in my garage. So it is uh, something that I'd like to see how it does with some of the various clutter as I'm pulling into the garage. The second one is something that I do every night. Uh, I back my car into the garage. My charging outlets are at the back of my garage. So I back in and I can run the cord to the rear left side, the rear driver side and plug in is just a whole lot easier. The challenge with that is having to back into my garage. My wife's Tesla is parked on one side and she doesn't always park the best. So I have to back in with her Tesla there and the side wall of the garage door where the garage door comes in, I have to back in and it can be somewhat of a tight fit. So we're gonna see how that performs here as well. So just to get a lay of the land here, this is what I have to experience as I'm pulling into the garage. Uh, I've got a refrigerator over here on the left, my charging cables on the back wall, some toy boxes and my tooling stuff with a bunch of clutter over here on the third bay. So I've got two usable bays here that I'm going to use to pull in. What I'll do here is pull into various sections here and we'll see how, how things performed and measure it with a tape measure here. Our first use case is pulling straight into the garage. I'm going to pull in where there's a couple of toy chests here and we'll see how we do. You can see by the squiggly lines on the screen that's reflecting how close we are to the side of the garage and so forth. So we are going to pull in here. And that's about typically how far I'll pull in. It's showing we've got we're at about 12 or 13 inches. So so let's go see how close we really are. All right, so we can see our toy boxes here and just eyeballing it, it looks pretty close. So if we use a ruler here from the front bumper, it's showing it is just about 14, 14 and a half. So it's, and it was showing 12 to 13 inches. So it's close. Not 100%. All right, we're going to run a second test pulling straight in into a different section of the garage. We're, we'll pull in closer to the refrigerator and the trash can where the trash can sticks out further from the wall. So we'll see how this works. So again, we're showing about 12 to 13 inches from the trash can. Let's see how accurate that is. So there's the trash can cable from the charger and it is a little bit tighter than that. It looks to be about uh, maybe 11 inches from the trash can there. Hard to see from if you look up here give you a better a little bit better perspective it's actually a little less so while it's saying 12 inches uh, there is less room than that but it's close now for our final test I'm going to do what I do every single day and that is back into the garage so I can charge my vehicle at night now the only difference here is I don't have my wife's car 
parked on the one side. She's not here right now. So we'll just try to recreate that as best as I can. So that's just picking up um, a hockey net that I have here and some driveway markings. So, and I need to squeeze as close as I can to the side wall here. And you can see it's showing about 24 to 28 inches, jumping around a little bit. But we'll back in here and I'll try to do what I normally do. So I'm getting closer here. I kind of swing it around a little bit. And you'll see I am pretty tight here to the sidewall. We'll see how it actually. So backing in up to my little storage chest there, showing us to stop. I know I can go further based on the camera. Um, so it's showing, it's showing roughly 30 inches. I'm not sure I'm buying that, but let's go see. So you can see actually how tight I am right there. And I'm guessing that's less than a foot. So I think it's off a little bit. So that was quite a bit off. There's actually six, maybe seven inches between the end bumper and my chest here. And it was showing about 30. So we're not very accurate right there. So what's interesting, as I got back into the car, put it in drive, the uh, distance actually decreased a little bit. So it's fluttering around 25, 26, 27. Still off. But I want to do one final test. Since I've got the sidewall to my garage here as I'm pulling in for the door, I want to see how accurate it is uh, measuring that distance because I have to pull in and back out every single day with this mess. So it's not interesting. It doesn't really measure the distance on the sides. I don't think if I put it in park here, put it back in drive. Yeah, it's not measuring the distance on the side using the side cameras. So, um, and nor do I really know what cameras are being used for that. Like I said, I wanted to do just a quick little test to see how the accuracy compared um, and let's just say it needs some work. While it's better than what I had, which was nothing, I'm not sure how much I'd really rely on it. I think one of the, the advantages of, of having something over nothing right now, if I'm not paying attention as I'm backing out of my garage, and one of the kids leaves something in the driveway maybe that I didn't see, at least the car would recognize it and potentially alert me, so I'd stop. I'm expecting more updates on this as Tesla is working to perfect it, and they're going to need to perfect Park Assist in order for me to leverage some of the features that I purchased in Enhanced Autopilot that have since been disabled and are still disabled. So... Summon, Smart Summon, and Auto Park are not going to be working until they sort out Tesla Vision. So stay tuned. We'll keep uh, an eye out on things. We'll see you guys in the next video.